Your first album, I Come From Hell, came out in 1977 and sure. uh, sold over 80 million copies. Yeah, hugely successful, hugely influential, yeah. Yeah, so would you blame people if they said that you haven't exactly returned to those heights since? If I understand the question, which I'm not even sure I, I totally do understand the question, you're suggesting that my appeal has somewhat waned in the past couple of decades. And I would say that for anybody to really see say that, you really don't understand Street Love. You don't understand the complete package of what I'm offering. The mid-80s album, Lunchtime at Lost Luggage, that was considered a commercial failure. Well, you'll have to forgive me if I don't share your individual trappings on the album, but as far as I'm concerned, that album it might not have had the commercial or the critical acclaim that you know, my other previous work it had, but I would say that that's a damn fine album. I would say that that really represents what I was going through in my life at that particular period in time. It's a state-of-the-art album. It's a rock and roll sandwich album. And to be honest, you just need to listen to that album. One of the songs is just three minutes of silence. So? I, I how, how, don't how, how grasp does that, your point. How does that rock? I think that, again, like any concept album, I mean, I, I don't really feel I should be explaining this to a journalist here, but any concept album really takes the listener through a journey. And that particular part in the album was about waiting for something, waiting for the next track. Just going back to the debut, uh, I come from hell, but I'm going back pretty soon really fast. Sure. The title track is one of the biggest, most bombastic rock songs I've, I've yeah. ever heard. And, and you know, it's one of the- Classic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And I just wondered how you can go from something like that to something from the Lunchtime at the Lost Luggage album, you know, which has a song called I Am A Tree. I think you're you're trivializing on the music. You know, it's an art form. You have to get that. You know, um, I would say that you can't just go in and say, you know, I've listened to I Am a Tree and I don't get it. It's like that song really it it, it shows the the transcendence from I Come From Hell One through to you know through Lunchtime at Lost Luggage through to I Come From Hell Two. It, it, it's a story, it's a narrative, you know, you have to get that, you know, um, and I think that's really the point that you're missing, you know, you can't just jump in there, you have to listen to I Come From Hell, and then you have to listen to Chicken Soup Addict, move on to I Am A Tree, and then you can, you know, fully experience later songs like Fluffy Cushion. So why have you decided to move to Scotland, and, and in particular Bathwell, now? Well, I mean, I was on tour in Europe, um, and I was going around and kind of getting a bit of a, a sense of the vibe. Um, and we'd been in a, a small pub in Bathwell, um, known as the Sailor's Pit. And it was, uh, you know, it, it just had such a community in Bathwell. And my countrymen, my original countrymen in, in America, um, they don't understand what Scotland is. You know, if you ask somebody what Scotland, they would think it's a cupcake or something, you know. 
tell me about your recent endeavours in charity and uh, the work you've been doing for the community here in, in Bathwell. Sure. Um, well, I volunteer uh, three nights a week at the local soup kitchen. Um, on a Wednesday, I will clean one of the local streets bins out. Um, it doesn't take that long if you put your mind to it. So what's the reasoning behind these, uh, these bins? Why do you clean them? Well, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like the way I give something back to the community. It's, um, it's very therapeutic. It's, uh, I don't know, a metaphor for life. You know, you get back what you put in and the community are generally quite appreciative of it. What are you doing? What are you doing my, my, my name's Colin. Yeah. This is a documentary, making a documentary. This is, a, this is Street Life. You know Street Life? Street Life! How's it going, bro? You all right, man? There's nothing that I won't do! Nothing that I won't Ten. do! Ten. Get yeah. in the bin! Love when we meet a fan. Um, I help the elderly surf the net. Sometimes I like to visit some of the elderly in the local community, you know? I'd like to give something back, it's nice. Hey Margaret, how's it going? You alright? Hi! <laughs> the place looks nice! Where's the dog? The dog's dead. <laughs> nice, I hated that dog. <laughs> just kidding. Have you eaten? So yeah, so what you want to really do is just keep Keep watching the screen, trying to make sure that you know you don't get outbid by somebody else. They might get your teapot soon, you know, and you might get it before you do. So you can keep bidding, though. I mean, you'll eventually get something. So you too, yo. Rock and roll, rock and roll. Um, I will volunteer um, wherever I can to you know help local school kids learn about music, rock and roll, sex, drugs, and so forth. I want to rock. We want to rock. My So that's you've got yes you've got 60 seconds left now you're being outbid do you want to go up to 50 somebody else has bid 45 yeah you give that a go oh, oh man out of time out of time but hey got tea here it's fine don't worry about it we'll be good but many have said that you've turned your back on your real calling which... who says well where, where are you getting that from my true calling who says that? I'll turn my back on it. Some critics have... <laughs> critics, right. Let me tell you something. I still jam with my band three times a week. Okay, two. Hey, guys. How's it going? What's up, Street? Are you rock and roll? Yeah. yeah. Rock and roll? Yeah! yeah. Let's work on some bets, man. Let's work on some bets. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were working on that middle section and that, um, that one we're talking about. Let's do that. Let's do that bit, yeah. <laughs> But I still am practicing, I'm still working hard to deliver the music that my fans want to listen to. I just happen to have diversified my portfolio, I've now got my fingers and a lot of dikes. Um, the bottom line is, I, I still have a very active music career, but that doesn't mean that I can't branch off and do something else. Um, and just because I might not have had the, the most impactful commercial success recently, doesn't mean that Street Loaf's not going to come back with vengeance. So, yeah, well the thing about the street, getting, street just brings it, it. Just totally, know, totally brings it every time man in practice, it's just like, yeah, I've seen him, you know, he's on the edge of, he's on the edge of collapse and the edge of vomit and the end of the tape, but it just brings it man, it means so much to him, he's all the time, um, it's amazing, it's amazing to get to play with And uh, I was in Sydney at the front row of one of these shows, singing along, you know, and, and he wanted me up on stage, he saw me down there and he invited me up, and so I, I was up there singing um, Devin Can Wait, which is one of my favourites. 
um, it was like just such a dream, you know. And, uh, and then he invited me over on tour, and, and he found out that I could play bass. And then uh, this is just living the dream, to be honest. You know? um, the first time that stuck out in my mind probably was me and the guitarist um, our yeah. previous band, no, no, which was a, a Wishbone Ash tribute band called uh, Wishbone yeah. Suspension. We were supporting, and the thing that struck us is well, it, he was doing like one stage, and you know, like he was nowhere to be seen. We were like, like "Where is this guy?" You know, he's like the singer of this band. So we were away, hunting yeah. about, yeah. looking around, yeah. went outside, um, and we I found him basically just kicking the sh out of this bin. haven't released an album in 20 years. That doesn't matter. I mean, like, you know, I don't really understand what that has to do with anything, you know? My music is my music is my music. It doesn't matter how many albums, it doesn't matter how much I'm performing. I mean, at the moment, I have a lot of things that I'm doing. I mean, it, you know, it's not just about music. Music is still the mainstay of my life, but it doesn't have to be everything. Hey, guys. Hey, what's, uh, what's going on here We're just, uh, Taking a look at the old girl, trying to see if we can get my trike up this back, see if we can uh, maybe sell her and get a few Benjamins. All right, man. Yeah. Is there anything I can do to help? Or? So this trike, it, it looks like it's got a lot of history behind it. Yeah, well, it's, um, you know, it's a kind of... Uh, you know, it, it, it's a custom. There's nothing like it in the whole wide world. It's, um, you know, one of a kind, a collector's item. It's, um, you know, got a custom paint job. Um, plenty of Scotland stickers to remind you that I'm uh, now 100% Scottish. I now live here. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's a beaut. It's uh, hoping to get some big money for it. So why are you getting rid of it? Well, it's, um, it, it's becoming a bit more of a... You know, it's more your your passion now, I suppose. I've not really kind of done much on it the past few years. It's really your labor of love. Mm -mm, well. So, yeah, so, I mean, obviously Ian's, like, kind of uh, picked up all the, uh, the the bits that are faulty, that need a little bit of work done. And, you know. So it's a, a, a bittersweet sale then, yeah? Very much so. I mean, this is my this is my baby, my first love. It uh, reminds me of my first wife. Um, big ass. But, you know, get you from A to B. And, and Ian, you're um, Streetlight's bandmate, but you're also his his mechanic, yeah. But what's the story behind that? Yeah, I'm, uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a mechanic, and I'm in his band, but um, you know, he's my mate. But, yeah, you know, he's a mechanic. He's someone to help help him fix up the fix up the trike. So uh, I'm, I'm just helping help him out. All right, enough of this horse. Shit. Let's ride. You gonna ride it? Oh yeah. yeah I'm gonna ride. All right. It. This is the uh, gentleman who'll be ending up with my uh, my sweet wheels, you know. Hey, bro, how's it going, man? You all right? Nice to meet you, man. Uh, that's the wheels there. I uh, just want uh, to get this helmet off. So, just for the, the camera crew. Man. Uh this is uh, Colin, filmmaker. Yeah, man. Press. Yeah. It's your helmet, man. You can. It's yours. Thanks so much. You be famous or something? I don't know, I um, read a few songs um, might be familiar with. Um, I got an addiction, yeah. an addiction to chicken soup. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's why you sell it, man. Ah, there's nothing wrong with a bike, man. I mean, it's a sweet ride. It's just uh, that chapter of my life is behind me and I'm ready to move forward to, you know, what 
a new vehicle to uh, attack the road with, you know? So, uh, just, yeah, see how it goes. Just help you out, man. Yeah, no worries, man. I'll trust that that's all there and stuff, man, you know? I'll uh, see you later on in that, dude. Thank you very man. much. This is my car. Oh yeah. Oh, oh hi. Alright, oh that's good one. This is my car. I don't know if you want a wee drive of the car first. I'll take a, I'll take a wee run in the tour de force that is your Kia. Well, I hope you like her. She's a fantastic car. There we go. So Starstruck at all, or not really? I mean, having a celebrity in your town is pretty awesome. But you know, since he's came here, he's been a part of our community. You know, he's helped out everybody that needs you know any help. It's really nice having you know a rock star in our community. But you know, nobody really sees him like that. So it's easy to forget his status here in uh, in Bardwell, yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. People do know who who he is, but because he's you know doing a lot of charity work, you know, and he's he's really you know, coming together with us, not trying to be above us or, you know, be like rock star kind of ways. That is, you know, he does kind of fit in with us, so we don't tend to have that sort of problem. So what's your favourite Street Love song? Um, a Bird in the Hand is worth two in the bush, definitely. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. Beautiful. It's wo wonderful. It's a... Uh piece of art is what it is. I'm uh, thoroughly impressed and I have to say, yeah. So we have a deal. We have a deal. We have a deal in Street Love. Beautiful. Fantastic. I want to know what it's like being there on stage in front of so many people. Oh, it's spectacular. I mean, it's it's the, you know, it's better than sex. It's, it's one of the, the most rewarding experiences that one can engage in. Um, you know, I would say that it's such a shame that so few of us get to experience what that's like, you know, to, to come out and to to stand in front of a crowd of 50,000 or more people just chanting your name, you know, street loaf, street loaf, you know, and it, it you just kind of, you get caught up in the atmosphere, you know, you can, you can smell the passion, you know, the emotion just kind of, it kind of wafts through the crowd and kind of infiltrates your soul, you and, know. And did that affect your relationship with There's you? nothing that I won't do. Nothing that I won't do. There's nothing that I won't do. But in terms of actually to get it. some loving from you. The origin of the name Street Loaf as well. <sighs> you need to do your f***ing research, man. Well, the spin. No, f*** that shit. Next question. Move the f*** on. Well, sometimes there's... Damn it! On a midsummer night, would you drink blood with an alley cat? Is he hungry? Yes. Will he eat me? Yes. On a midsummer night, would you drink blood with an alley cat? Yes. I think you would lie. I want to know what fuels street life with whatever it is you do whether it's your acting whether it's your charity work your music what motivates you sure um rock and roll man 
Um, rock and roll is integral to everything that is street loaf. It's the full package, you know. Um, rock is, I mean, rock isn't music, you know. Let, let's get that down. You know, rock is an abstract concept. You know, rock is this hand, it's this hand, it's, it's these ankles, it's these ears, you know. Everything that I am is rock and roll, you know. Okay. Um, some people have a heart of stone. I have a heart of rock. That's what I was gonna say. You read my mind as we were making out. That's what I was gonna say. You read my mind as we were making out. That's what I was gonna say. You read my mind as we were making out. That's what I was gonna say. You read my mind as we were making out.